Alright, lesson 3.4, developing and applying the quadratic formula. Uh, so far what we've seen is uh, that sometimes you're not going to be able to factor uh, when you're trying to solve a quadratic. So as a result, we're going to uh, look at a way where we could apply a formula that works every single time, specifically to those ones that uh, do not factor nicely. All right. uh, this is probably one of the more daunting uh, lessons in, the, uh, in this unit. Uh, so stay with me. This first thing that we're going to be working with here is going to be a proof. So it says, when a quadratic equation is solved by completing the square, a formula is generated that can be used to solve any quadratic equation. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to start off with a quadratic in its basic form. ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. All right. And so what we're going to try and do is we're going to use algebra here to try and uh, rearrange this to solve for x. And in order to do that, we're going to use those skills that we learned in the last uh, unit to complete the square. All right. So we'll go through this slowly. And uh, this proof, believe it or not, it's going to be uh, probably about 10 steps here. I'm going to be looking for you to be able to do this on your own. All right. So if you understand how to complete the square, this should be no problem. So when we're normally completing the square and we have some type of uh, quadratic like so, you would normally try and get rid of the, uh, the leading coefficient. All right. So I'm going to make note over here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to divide each term. by a. All right. And so if we divide each term by a, what that's going to do, that's going to end up uh, getting rid of that leading coefficient. So if we divide everything by a, we would now have x squared plus bx over a plus c over a equals 0. All right. Now the next thing we normally do when we are completing a square is we move the constant to the other side. So my constant in this case is the c over a. So I'm going to have now x squared plus bx over a is equal to negative, of course, because I moved it over c over a. All right. From this stage, we are now set to go ahead and complete the square. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to complete the square. What we need to do is deal with this middle term right here. If you recall, when we're normally completing the square, we're going to take that term and then we're going to divide it by 2 and square it to both sides of the equation. So over here on the side, if you take b over a and we divide it by 2, it's just going to be b over 2a. Now I need to take that and square it. That's going to give me b squared all over 4a squared. So you're going to see I'm going to add that to both sides of the equation. I now have x squared plus bx over a. That doesn't change. Now I'm going to add the b squared all over 4a squared to both sides, minus the ca. Okay. From here now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I will factor the L right, uh, ls for left side, and I'm going to simplify. All right, to go ahead and factor this, if you recall, we can start with an x, make it squared, have our equal signs. Uh, what's going to go right in here, if there's a plus sign right there, a plus sign is going to go in here. It's always going to be the square root of this term, or whatever that is, divided by 2. So it's just going to be b over 2a goes in the brackets like so. Now if we come to the other side here, what I want to achieve is I want to achieve a common denominator, right? So if you notice, this has a denominator for a squared. This one has a denominator just of a. I'm going to then combine those. So if I make this a 4a squared like so, then up here I'm going to have to add another uh, 4a. So now I have b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. So I've achieved that common denominator. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is from this step I'm going to take the square root of both sides. All right, so let's scroll down here a little bit. So when I take the square root of both sides right here, you're going to see what's going to happen. If I take like this and like this, that's going to get rid of the exponent. So now I just have x plus b over 2a. And when I do the same thing on this side, it's going to be equal to plus or minus. Recall when you take the square root, b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. All right. Uh, I will now go ahead and simplify what's in the brackets right there. Okay. So 
So I have x plus b all over 2a is equal to plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Notice how this is slightly different though. Since I can take the square root of 4a squared, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of a squared is just a, I can leave it like so. All right. So I'm almost there. I have about one more step here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the b um, over 2a to the other side of the equation, right? Because if you recall at the beginning, I said I wanted to try and solve for x. So I want x to be all by itself. So when I do that, I'm going to have negative b all over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now you'll note that I do actually have a common denominator right there. So that means I can simplify this one step further to say that I have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And this is the quadratic formula. Now, that was probably a little daunting. You may have to go through that and watch that again. But what I'm actually doing there is, if you remember your skills from completing the square, I'm just following those exact same things. All right. So am I going to be expecting you to be able to do that? Yes. Uh, I don't think you're going to need to memorize that. I think you can physically just kind of, uh, as you do more completing the squares, you'll understand kind of how that works. Right. So if we um, push on here, I just have the quadratic form. The solution of the quadratic form is so that's what we started with, where a, b, and c are constants, and a cannot equal 0, uh, is given by the quadratic formula x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a like so. All right. That's another thing that when you're using that, you're going to expect it to know that, memorize that. So let's try this. You're going to see how easy it is. Uh, the first thing that we start out with, since we're just uh, simply just substituting into the equation, I always want to know what my a, b, and c are over here on the side. So I suggest you guys do that. So a is 1 b is 2, c is 7. So what you're always looking at is make sure these are in correct order in descending order of power, so x squared, 2x, and 7. If not, move them so that they are. I'll start out with the equation here. Equation, of course, is x equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then you just simply can substitute in. So I'm going to have negative. Make sure you substitute with brackets, plus or minus b squared. So that's going to be a 2 squared minus 4 times a, 1 times 7, all over 2 times 1. Simplifying this, I have a negative 2 plus or minus. 2 squared is 4, minus 28, all over 2. You may notice where the problem is going to be already right now, because we do have a problem right here. When you take 4 and you subtract <coughs> 28, we're going to get negative 24. All right, so I'll highlight that part for you. Since we cannot take the square root of a negative number right there, what we can say is that this is going to have no real roots. Okay? And if you recall, what that means when you have no real roots is you either have one of these two scenarios. You have a graph that's going something like that, or a graph that's going something like this. And we'll cover this later in the year, but because the leading coefficient is positive, you actually know it's a graph that looks like so. So since it's not crossing the x-axis anywhere, that is why we say that it has no real roots. Okay, so that's one scenario that you'll come across. Let's try another one. This one we have a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 2, c is equal to negative 7. We start out with the equation again. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, this is definitely one I'd like you guys to try, so I want to try this and then fast forward to it. Uh, so we have negative, negative 2, plus or minus negative 2 squared minus 4 times a times c. I am rocking through this pretty quickly because the only tough thing that we really have to do, deal with is uh, what we did on the first page where we had to come up with the proof. All right, so this should be uh, not too bad. Uh, two negatives make a positive, so we have 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 uh, minus, oops, I forgot to put the negative in with the 7. So that's going to be plus 28. And so you're going to see this time it's going to work. Simplifying further, we have 2 plus or minus the square root of 32 all over 2. All right. Now, I'm going to highlight this guy right here. Since that works, it's a positive um, underneath the root right there. What I now want you to try to do is simplify the radicals. All right. So this is what we did a lot of in grade um, 10 and did a little bit actually already this year. 
So when you simplify that radical, we're looking for a perfect square that lives inside of it. If you recall, 16 times 2 gives you 32. And now what's going to happen is, when you take the square root of it, the 4, the 16 is going to kind of pop outside here and turn into a 4. So you have 4, the square root of 2, all over 2. Now what's going to happen here is if all three of these terms, this term 1, 2, and 3, don't worry about what's in the, uh, the radical sign there. If all of those terms are divisible, then I want you to simplify. Now it must be all three. Make sure you understand that. So since they're all divisible by 2, I'm going to divide them by 2. Therefore, I'll have 1 plus or minus 2 root 2, and it would technically be over 1. So my final answer is just going to be like so. so that means one of the roots is at 1 plus 2 root 2, and the other one is at 1 minus 2 root 2. Let's push on to the next page. This was an example like I was kind of talking about where things are not in the correct order. You're going to have to do a little bit of work before you can get cracking on this one. So I'll show you what I'm looking for here. I got 2x is equal to. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with my uh, distributive property here. So if we have x times x, that's going to give you x squared. And then x times positive 1 gives you x. Then that gives you a negative x. And that gives you a negative 1. All right, so that's all you're going to get right there. Now I'll distribute out the 3, giving me 3x squared minus 3. And then moving everything to one side, we have 3x squared minus 2x minus 3. So you'll note that that looks friendly now. I put that in the correct order. That's a problem that students often have. So I have my a, my b, and my c being 3, negative 2, and negative 3. Let's substitute into the equation. We have x is equal to. This time I won't write the equation. Negative b, so negative b will be a negative, a negative 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so b squared being negative 2, all squared, minus 4, a being 3, c being a negative 3, all over 2a, so 2 times 3. And now we just simplify. We have 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 36, all over. 6, then we have 2 plus or minus the square root of 40 all over 6. We're going to try and see if we can simplify that 40. Are there any perfect squares that live inside of 40? And there are. We have 4 times 10. And when we take the square root of 4, it turns into a 2. So we have 2 root 10 all over 6. And again, this one's a little bit unique in the fact that 1, 2, 3 terms can be simplified. So we're going to divide them all by 2, leaving you with 1 plus or minus root 10 all over 3 as your final solution. You might ask, why didn't I write a 1 right there? We just assume there's always a 1 right there, so you don't need to write that. Okay, so we'll just leave that out. So that'd be your final answer. Last one here. You'll notice that this is kind of just plugging and chugging. Put it into the uh, equation, and, uh, and then you're good to go here. So uh, this next one. You'll notice that it's not in the right order, so we're going to go ahead and move it into the right order. So when I do that, I'm going to have 2 thirds x squared minus 5x over 6 plus 1 equals 0. Now you could do this a couple different ways. You could go and substitute in what you have right here, a being 2 thirds, b being negative 5 over 6, and c being 1. Or what you could do here is you could multiply the equations by a um, common multiple here to get rid of these ugly fractions. So if I multiply everything by 6, for instance, all right, take a look what's going to happen. So this will be 6 times 2 is 12. 12 divided by 3 gives you 4x squared. 6 times uh, the negative 5 gives you negative 30. Negative 30 divided by 6 is just negative 5x plus 6 equals 0. Much easier question to deal with. So that's going to be a strategy rather than you guys having to deal with all of your fractions. All right. So let's go ahead and try this. We'll have our equation, x is equal to, now we substitute in, actually I'll write what we have over here, a was equal to 4, b was a negative 5, and c was 6. Substituting in, we have x is equal to negative b, so this one will be negative negative 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so b squared being negative 5 squared, minus 4 times a being a 4, c being a 6, all over 2 times 4. Simplifying, I have 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus, let's see what that's going to be, uh, 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times 6 is 96. 
That's a deal breaker right there. Since